Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be looking at the tool post of the diamond turning lathe. That just got done a couple days ago, so I thought I'd go over what some of the design considerations were here and how I made it. So this is the tool post we're looking at. Tools, tool height setting is extremely important on diamond turning lathes because if the diamond is not exactly on center line, when you get to the center of your part, it will leave a nub or a cone or some sort of center artifact that can often ruin parts and break the diamond. So being able to adjust it with a very high degree of resolution, but still have a very stiff tool post is very important. So this is the solution I came up with for that. It's a flexure-based tool post system where we use this micrometer adjust to move the tool up and down, as you can see. Now we'll go over the flexure design considerations in a moment here, but just other broad scale things. As you can see, it's on an aluminum base, which is mounted to this, this slide with bolts. And there's three pins you can see that kinematically locate it in place. So in theory, you have some amount of repeatability taking it on and off. On top of that aluminum base, there is the main body itself, which is the titanium flexure. On top of that, there's the tool mount, which is just this screw right here. This allows for adjustability of the, the tool angle and stick out so we can sort of just move it wherever and then there's the one screw that clamps it down and now that we're on the subject here's the tool itself an edge technologies monocrystalline diamond tool as sharp as they come basically so very grateful to them for providing it um, definitely hit them up for all your monocrystalline diamond tool needs but uh that's the tool we'll be using. That's how it mounts up there. Pretty simple. And then the micrometer adjust is built into that. So the micrometer screw looks like this. There's a little groove that's ground in the, in the spindle of it here. And then we use a cone point set screw to pin that in place. There's a, there's a bore in this little section here or that's just a gauge fit, and then it's locked in place by that set screw. So it's fixed rigidly down there, and then the body is fixed up here on the moving part. So that's the, uh, that's the broad overview. Now we'll go over to the bench and take a closer look at the flexure considerations. Okay. So here we have our exploded super high-tech paper view of the flexure stage, or both of them. Um, so the main, the main mechanism of adjustment is this stage moving up and down, and that sets the tool height, the tool's right up here. But we'll ha we have this other stage in the middle. And so to explain what that's for, let's first just pretend that that's not there and this is all one rigid, rigid body here. So as we go to adjust our flexure, our tool up and down, we get this nice seemingly straight motion and there's no problems. But if we zoom in, or well, we can't zoom in, but what we can do is greatly exaggerate the motion and make it, uh, make it become visible. You notice the center line of the whole stage has shifted a little bit. This this little little distance right in there. And that is the parasitic air motion of the stage. So the stage is not in fact creating perfect straight line motion, it's tracing an arc. It's called arcuate motion. And this is a huge problem because as you can imagine, if this part of the micrometer is fixed right here, rigidly affixed, held in by a set screw, and this is rigidly affixed up here, but 
this starts trying to move to the side while this is held in place, now we're shearing this whole, whole mechanism and that's going to bind up almost instantly. And we're not gonna be able to turn it anymore because it's just putting enormous sideways loads on the, uh, on the moving part of the micrometer. Turns out this parasitic air motion is actually very easily calculatable. If we call the, let's say the primary motion of the stage delta y, and I'm using the coordinate system of the lathe here. So y is up and z is, is to the left. But if we're adjusting it in y like that, the equation for the parasitic error that it moves in negative z is simply delta z equals delta y squared over 2l, where l is the length of the arm of the primary flexure there. And so if you do that math for the the actual tool post, it ends up only being, you know, maybe for for the entire travel of the stage, which keep in mind isn't being used, it still ends up only being, you know, a few thou or so. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but this is a very stiff a very stiff uh, object here. So f equals kx, if you try and move x, you know, a few thou, you're going to generate enormous forces and that's going to bind up pretty quickly. And so that is the reason that that is there. This, this little stage here allows for motion like this, but is still very stiff in, in y. So this is not going to want to pull up or get compressed just because of the length of these, these arms, or the depth in this case. So it's still very stiff up and down, keeping the tool post stiff, but it has compliance like this. So that way, as you move this and the, the center line of the fixed part of the micrometer shifts over, this can just shift with it and keep everything nice and concentric and get rid of those nasty forces that would bind up the screw otherwise. So. That's the idea behind that. Um, there's a lot of other ways to do this. Like you could have had a folded flexure where there's two, two arms that sort of make a U. And so the parasitic errors of the two, the two stages basically cancel each other out. So that yields a net zero on the part that we care about. But this is another way to do it. Um, ended up being the simplest for us here. So why are you EDM'd that out? And uh, that's all there is to it. Anyways, hope that made some amount of sense, um, and I'll, uh, I'll share some more videos of all this stuff soon. Thanks for watching.